So you heard the DDS, and I'm here to tell you, don't worry. Uh, you're not in the dental chair. You're actually looking at, staring at a dentist from quite a safe distance. And I promise I will not talk about flossing tonight. <laughs> I'll try not to. Um, I want to try a little experiment, um, a, a relaxation exercise. Uh, I'd like everyone to close their eyes and just start taking some, some deep breaths. Uh, imagine yourself in a state of deep contentedness and calmness. Uh, your heart is effortlessly pumping blood through, through your body. Your muscles are not doing anything. There's no need for them to do anything. Your brain is idling. It's um, reconfiguring the thoughts of the day uh, so that tomorrow, the next day, you can remember them. Um, your body is excreting a hormone that some refer to as the fountain of youth. Uh, and that hormone trumps all others. It actually erases the stress hormone. And time is passing, and you really have no sense as to whether it's fast or slow. Your body has completely taken over, and you're resting. So open your eyes. And who here feels very relaxed? I know I do. Raise your hand if you do. Good. And keep your hand raised if that's how you feel when the alarm clock in the morning goes off. Okay, I think I saw some hands drop. Good, that's fine, thanks. Um, what I just described to you was the perfect night's sleep. Hopefully some of you recognize that. So why, why listen to a dentist talk about sleep? Let me tell you a little story about one of my patients. Her name is Ellie. Ellie came in to see us. Uh, she was 17 years old at the time. Um, first thing I noticed is that she was grinding, clenching, grinding her teeth, grinding her teeth so much that her fillings were cracking and actually some of them were falling out. Uh, she was very stressed. She was a high school student. Um, she wasn't thriving. And later, while she was having x-rays taken, uh, her mother pulled me aside and said, you know what, I think our daughter has ADD. So I think you may be surprised as to why this may have been and what the cause of this was. And I can tell you it's this. Now, most of you have recognized that I just pulled out a straw and this is an approximation of the human airway in terms of size. The, I could easily have pulled out a smaller straw, like a coffee straw, or just a regular drinking straw. And this is the best case scenario for the size of our airway. Um, and of course, it gets a little bit more complicated than that because when we decided to stand up on two legs, we developed a little kink in our airway because we're standing up like this. And also, we wanted to talk to our neighbor and we developed the capability of language and the voice box moved up a little bit towards the kink and of course, the, the passageway to the lungs is right here. So this essentially is a very complex and some would say compromised airway. Now remember, everything you are and will be depends on how much air passes through this little opening. And right now we're all sitting here and we're functioning well and we're awake and we're alert and things seem to be going well. But the problem is, is that when we lie down and we go to sleep, things change. The compromise becomes more, more uh, critical. First of all, the muscles around the airway relax, they go to sleep. And when that happens, the tone of the airway is lost. Um, the tongue, the, also a muscle, will turn into a little ball. It, it basically loses its tone, turns into a little ball, curls up, and it drops too. Gravity has an effect on the weight of the tongue. It's been measured. So what happens? Well, we have problems breathing at night. Our breathing is interrupted while we sleep. And some would say, well, so what? We just roll over and we go back to sleep. And that's fine, and that's what does happen. But if we're not breathing, then something else happens. Our sleep is interrupted. In other words, our brain wakes up. So 
let, let me describe it in a different way. In this valley, in Silicon Valley, we, we're all about optimizing our hard drives. You know, we unmount the hard drive, we run some algorithms and software to uh, help, um, you know, uh, get rid of the bad sectors. Um, we optimize the hard drive so that all the data points are, are properly optimized and closer together so that the hard drive runs more efficiently the next morning. And, but we do know that when, and we've, and we've read and we know, and some of us have experienced this, that if we lose power while this is happening, if we pull the plug or close our laptop, the heads will crash and we lose data. The hard drive is not well anymore. So essentially that's what happens to the human brain during sleep. I mean, our body unmounts the brain and starts fixing it and optimizing it and consolidating memories. So you may, be, you may have studied for an exam and that night, that data, that data gets lost if your sleep is interrupted. And it's all because you can't take a breath at night. So what's the big deal, right? Well, you're high school students, you know what I'm talking about. It's important to sleep well. You're not getting a lot of sleep, but what kind of quality sleep are you getting? It actually gets a little worse than that. Um, the tongue, as it falls back, will close the airway, and that actually produces a, um, a feeling of panic. And again, you're asleep, but it does register, and when you wake up in the morning, you're very anxious because you've panicked at night. It's a fight or flight response, and you can't breathe. Again, humans are the only animals, mammals, on this planet that can choke. Our airway is compromised so much that we can have a lot of complications. Something interesting that has uh, come to light recently in studies, and it again has to do with dentistry, I find it fascinating, um, it has to do with grinding. Grinding, it turns out, is a mechanism for us to save our airway at night. Dentistry used to think of grinding as a, uh, caused by stress and by poor mechanics like the bite, uh, malocclusions, crowded teeth, uh, growth of the jaw and all that. And that essentially has been thrown out and the new paradigm is we grind at night, our fillings will fall out like Ellie, uh, we grind at night because it helps us open our airway. It's an autonomic response and it saves us. Unfortunately, it's still an interrupted sleep. So back to Ellie. So later, Ellie came in, and she's in college now. She's thriving. Her, no, no mention of ADD-like tendencies. Um, and she's happy. And the best part for me was, of course, she stopped grinding, and the fillings I put in are staying in. So how did Ellie accomplish that? You know, when I was in high school, I had this this prime directive, um, it was to get a car. And I'm sure many of you have thought of that and perhaps are in the same, same situation. Um, so it was all about getting the car. Let me tell you about a different car. It's an acronym, C-A-R, and it helped Ellie, and it can help all of us in this room. We all have the same airway the compromise that I just described to you. So C stands for consider. Consider, don't be in denial, don't be one of those Americans, 80 to 90% of us that have a sleep disorder breathing issue and don't know it, undiagnosed and untreated. Consider that you have the airway that everyone else does and that it is a compromise and this could be you. You could have interrupted breathing, which leads to interrupted sleep, and that leads to data loss and a, a brain crash, you could call it. It's important to not be in denial about this thing, this situation where if you do not have sleep ability, then you can't sleep without interruptions, 
and then, of course, you suffer for it. The second letter, A, is for assess. How do you assess whether you have any kind of sleep difficulty, interruptions in breathing, when you're asleep? That's difficult to do. So the good news, and I think in this valley we can appreciate this, and when I first heard it, I smiled because I thought it was a joke, and I heard it from a neurologist, a sleep specialist, MD, neurologist. He said, there's an app for this. In fact, there are several apps, and the apps I'm referring to are ones that you can download to your phone, and the best apps, the best sleep apps, are the ones that listen to you at night. So you would, you would put the phone by your bed, your smartphone, in this case it is a smartphone, and it would listen to you at night, and the next morning you would have some bits of data. You would find out how many interruptions you had while sleeping, and you could listen to what kind of interruption it was. Did you toss and turn? Did you make some weird breathing noises? Did you stop and then start again? Again, interrupted breathing leads to interruptions in your sleep. Um, another thing I recommend to my patients, for example, to the parent in this case, I ask them, you know, after your child's gone to bed, then an hour later, maybe, maybe two hours later, go into the child's room, keep the lights off, of course, and just sit there and listen. There's a lot you can get from that. Unfortunately, in this room, I bet most of the young people in this room go to bed well after <laughs> the parents, right? Um, and that's fine. I would, I would tell the high school student, the young child, the, the young adult, anyone, it doesn't matter, go in and listen to your parents. That could be your sleep future. You could be hearing it. So, because there is a genetic predilection to small airways and, and issues with breathing. And so the third letter, of course, is, R for, is for referral. So you've assessed your sleep. You kind of have a notion that, you know, you're, you're grinding your teeth. Um, you are tired. You're napping. You can't stay awake. Or you're just not functioning well. You've listened to yourself sleep at night, and you are surprised at what you hear via the app. So get the referral. You've done this already. You may not know it, but you're seeing your dentist twice a year, maybe once a year. Ask him or her. Ask your dentist and say, say to him, am I grinding? And if you're grinding, take that as an indication that you need a referral to a sleep specialist. So make, get the referral and find out. It's important. You know, there's a, there was a fantastic film that kind of came to mind when I prepared for this, this talk. And it stars Robin Williams, and it's called The Dead Poet Society. And he plays a uh, high school instructor. It's at a prep school. And one day he walks into the classroom and he was very much concerned about inspiring his students. And he runs in, he jumps up on one of his uh, students' desks, and of course they're all surprised. And he yells out, carpe diem, seize the day and make your lives extraordinary. And of course you all know here that that's what you're here for. That's why you're listening to me. That's why you're at a TEDx event. That's why you're going to school. That's why you're concerned about college. You're, you're trying to seize the day and make the most of it. So I would take that one step further. I would, first of all, get the car, go through the whole process, um, and then take this straw and don't let go of it. Keep it in sight, put it in your school backpack, and don't, don't let go of it, don't throw it away, don't, don't you know, forget about the straw until you have verified your ability to breathe at night, to sleep. Verifying your sleep ability is crucial. Remember, sleep is innate, but it's not guaranteed. In fact, you should really seize the night, carpe noctum, and then only then will the day be yours. Thank you.